counselor from University of Cincinnati, UC, and she oversees the Columbus, Ohio recruitment um, and oversees students going through the application process from Columbus area. So that is perfect. She herself is a proud UC graduate, but she is also a uh, a Columbus area native graduating from Reynoldsburg High School before going off to UC. And now she prides herself on her commitment to recruiting diverse student leaders from the Columbus area. Uh, her dedication to student success and representing the University of Cincinnati has allowed her to build relationships and create community among her students. Uh, she is a recent graduate, having just graduated in fall of 2020. So really grateful that she can not only talk about the admissions process, but also what it's like from going from Central Ohio to UC and then being a recent student uh, at UC. So with that, I'm going to turn it over. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Clark and Dr. Kirsten Fox for the warm introduction. I appreciate it. So like I said, my name is Anna Smith. I'm an admissions counselor at UC. Um, our role is to just help you all throughout the college application process and be that person to answer any questions that you may have about the University of Cincinnati. So I'm really excited to talk about UC today with you all. And of course, it is a great day to be a Bearcat. So, the University of Cincinnati is located just two miles north of downtown Cincinnati. It's about a five mile um, campus and it is a walkable pedestrian friendly campus. You can literally get from one corner to the next in just 14 minutes. Um, so it is really pedestrian friendly for our students. This number right here, 46,388 encompasses all of our students at the University of Cincinnati. We do have two regional campuses, UC Blue Ash and UC Claremont. This is a great opportunity for students who would like to start out one of our regional campuses. They have great benefits, anything from um, lower tuition costs, personalized classes, and then transition to uptown or main campus at UC. So that is our number, but don't be afraid if that number may look a little daunting. The undergraduate population is around 27,000, and that is 27,000 new friends, new colleagues, um, new people that you can connect with and truly expand that network while you are in college. And so we also like to share a little bit about our enrollment numbers. So 4.6 of students come from international countries, uh, which is really exciting. We have actually over 50 countries all representing for students that come here and take classes. So your next best friend could literally be sitting across the world from you right now. Who knows? We also have a great out of state population as well. 21% of our students and then 15.1 of our students identify as multicultural. This is all really important because college is a great opportunity to diversify yourself, um, connect and learn from people from different backgrounds as you're growing yourself as a student. So I like to share those numbers. But moving along here at UC, uh, we really have everything that a student can have to succeed. So within a campus our size, you get a great deal of diversity of thought, background and interest and to accommodate all those varying passions and interests, we offer hundreds of academic programs and many tools to see you out throughout your Bearcat journey. So let's dive right into what those are. We have over 350 academic programs. So as you're sitting here thinking about maybe what do you wanna do as a future career, maybe you wanna be a nurse, maybe you wanna be a journalist, um, or even just get a liberal arts degree in something like history or communication that can be applied in so many different fields. We have all of those programs right here at UC and also a number of minors and certificates that you can add on to your degree to make it more applicable to you. Um, so we have minors in organizational leadership, certificates in social justice, Spanish, art therapy, anything you can um, to complement that degree. And I also do wanna mention, uh, like Dr. Kirsten Fox mentioned, I'm a UC alumni. Um, and so coming into UC, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to major in. So I started out in exploratory, which I'll talk about in the next slide. But what I really liked about the wide variety of different options of majors, minors, and certificates is that I could create this degree that really reflected who I am as a person. So I added a certificate in community engagement, 
which is something I've always been passionate about and a minor in organizational leadership. So our degrees can reflect who you are. And we also have small classroom environments. So there is a 70 to one student to faculty ratio. I really enjoyed this as a student because it allowed me the space and opportunity to create relationships um, with my professors who served as my mentors. They connected me to different internship opportunities and I was just really able to thrive in that small classroom environment. And here at UC, we have 13 academic colleges. So think of this as UC as a big umbrella and the 13 colleges as smaller um, umbrellas that categorize all of our different majors. So to name off a few of the colleges, we have Linder College of Business, College of Engineering and Applied Science, College of Arts and Sciences, and those are just a few. So moving along, like I said, exploratory studies. It's okay to go into college and not be exactly sure what you wanna do. This is a great major for students to start out as, as they will get to kind of pick and choose different classes that they are interested in taking. Um, and it's very intentional. So students will be paired with an academic advisor that really helps them learn more about their interests through different things like personality tests or just getting to know all the different majors that you see and the career paths that you can take within those. So exploratory is a really great program. Um, like I said, for students who are not entirely sure, we also have a university honors program, and this is a little different than most honors programs. It's not that the classes are necessarily any harder. It's all about experience-based learning. There are different perks for students as well, such as early enrollment, honors housing, um, but as an honors student, you get to kind of elevate your experience and do things, um, whether it is a leadership retreat or studying abroad or doing hands-on research, Anything like that, the University Honors Program really helps and promotes students um, for those opportunities. And then students at UC have a plethora of learning resources right at their fingertips, so they know that they are supported. Um, and I will talk about a little bit about those here in a second. So at UC, we have what's called the Bearcat Promise. This is a promise that when you graduate, you will have a diploma in one hand and a plan for the career in the other. Um, UC kind of prepares this for you from the start. I know for me, it really started with my academic advisor um, talking about, you know, what I was even interested at UC. Um, did I want to study abroad? Did I want to have an internship? Things like that and building that all into the plan because UC is really all about making sure that students feel prepared um, and have careers um, or reach their goals after graduation. So in order to achieve that Bearcat promise, we have a number of student services that I'm excited to share with you all about because I heavily utilize all of these resources as a student myself. So it starts with academic advising. Um, your advisor would meet with you from day one of orientation and see you all the way through graduation. My advisor helped me stay on track. I do believe that it takes a village to get through college. And so you wanna lean on um, all these wonderful support systems uh, to empower you all the way through. So the advisor is there for you to make sure you're on the right track towards graduation and taking all those classes. Next, we have the learning commons. This is where students can go for free tutoring services, um, whether it is our academic writing center, our math center. I remember I went there um, when I was struggling with one of my classes and I ended up with an A. So it is a really great resource to make sure that you're staying on top, reaching the GPA and the goals that you want. Um, and it's also a great place for students for employment. So if there's a topic such as English or math that you are really great at, you can be a student tutor at the Learning Commons and have a great part-time job on campus. We've got our one-stop student office. They handle everything with financial aid, billing, registration, those are your folks who are very um, expertise within the financial aid and can help students throughout that process. We have accessibility resources for our students who may have a learning or physical difference. We provide as many accommodations to students as possible to make sure that they are um, succeeding both inside and outside the classroom. And next, I'm gonna be talking about some of our identity-based resources on campus. So these centers on campus um, truly provide a space for inclusion and community for our students from different backgrounds. So to name off a few, we have the African-American Cultural Resource Center. They have a wonderful first year um, mentorship 
mentorship program called Transitions. This is great for our African-American or Black students to have that community coming in. Um, they learn about campus, they learn about resources. Um, it's really just having students that look like you um, and are going through um, a similar thing with a lot of guidance. We have ethnic, ethnic programs and services. Um, one of their signature programs is World Affair. Um, this is a really awesome event on campus that takes place sometime in March, um, but all throughout the week, there are different programming on campus that highlights um, things. This office also hosts the Latinx, a student welcome, the Asian student welcome, which happens at the beginning of campus. So ethnic programs and services is wonderful. We have the Gen 1 house, which is a specified housing for our first generation students. They are provided extra support, um, different resources through the Gen 1 house, the LGBTQ plus center, veterans programs, women's center, which is where I found um, some of my favorite communities at um, they had a lot of women-centered focused uh, activities and mentorship opportunities. So that was always great. And then of course we have our experience-based learning career center. This is where students can go for mock interviews to um, re-up their uh, resume. You can go there to help search for different internships or co-ops as well. And you can even get a new professional headshot um, in our professional headshot booth, which is kind of fun because nobody wants to keep using, you know, their old senior pictures as you're looking for the job. So that is really great. You can just go in, take a professional headshot um, and start looking for a job. So those are some of our wonderful student services to just empower our students to be great on campus. And so here at UC, we have 100% student participation. Now, what does that mean? We are all about the experience-based learning. So no matter what your major is, you will be participating in some kind of real world um, experience on the job, uh, which is really important for building your resume. So in terms of co-ops, we are the school that invented the co-op. What is a co-op, Anna? It is full-time paid, uh, work in your respective field. So this is for select programs such as DAP and the College of Engineering and Applied Science. What happens typically is that students will be placed on a rotational schedule where they're taking full-time classes one semester and then they're working full-time um, at a corporation and then they are taking classes again. So this keeps flipping back and forth. Um, and for those specific programs, it ends in five years. We also have internships. The difference between a co-op and internship is that an internship is often part-time. It can be paid or unpaid, and it's a little more flexible. But here is a full list of all of the different types of experience that students can get at UC. So whether you're a nurse and you're getting that clinical experience, or maybe you are a piano or musical theater major and you are getting artistic performance hours um, through our College Conservatory of Music. We have so many different options, but it's really exciting um, when students are always doing something great. For me as a student, um, for my different experiences that I had, I worked as a student orientation leader. Um, one summer, it was a full-time paid job, and I got to help welcome in the new class and do some fun activities with the incoming freshmen to help get them acclimated to campus. That taught me a lot about myself as a student leader um, and also more about UC, so that was a great professional experience for me. I also had a part-time internship at a um, diversity consulting center. And so that was really great. It was my professor that helped um, get me that internship and I took a class credit for that. So I was earning class credit as I was interning, as I was working. And then last but certainly not least on that page right there is study abroad, which I'll talk about next. So students can study abroad in so many different countries. We represent over 60 countries. Um, there are over a thousand students that go every single year and at least 98% of students have some type of scholarship supported. I think that learning beyond the classroom is one of the most enriching experiences for students where they can learn about themselves and the world that they'll be contributing back to. So we have a plethora of different study abroad types too, because we know that students have all different types of comfort levels. For me, I was like, no, nah, I don't wanna do a whole year. I don't think I can handle being away from my family that long. So I chose to do a program that was faculty led. It was only 10 short days. Um, I went with a group of students uh, with a professor and we had a class attached to it. And then of course, students can do one semester, 
with an exchange program. They can do a whole year where they're enrolling with another school um, in a different country, but still earning credits at UC. So lots of different options when it comes to studying abroad, but I highly recommend it, um, taking in the world as a student. And there's no better time to do it than while you're in college. So um, there's a reason that it's called student life. Next, I'm gonna be talking about what it means to live at UC and kind of develop as a student. So here at UC, about 83% of first year students live on campus. There is a requirement for first year students who live outside of a 50 mile radius. So that would be you, all of my Columbus students, as it wouldn't be too ideal to have to commute to campus about two hours from home, um, but you can find your home right here at UC. There are 16 different types of residence halls, anything from traditional, which has your communal bathrooms, sometimes multiple roommates. If you're like, no, Anna, I do not want to share a bathroom with all of those kids. We have um, apartment style or suite style residence halls as well. Um, so those have a couple more amenities for students, such as a private bathroom, maybe shared just among you and a couple of roommates, um, sometimes a full kitchen. It just depends, but we truly have a residence hall for um, any student. And I will say that the residence hall was kind of the first place that I found my community as well. I was a little shy coming from um, Columbus, which is just, you know, obviously just a different city two hours away um, to a place that I didn't know too many other students. Um, and so being in the residence hall and pushing myself out of my comfort zone to go to different events that they're having in the hall, whether it was just like pizza, um, things like that, I got to meet other students and we just really became connected in those ways. So Next, I'll be talking about kind of just what it's like to live on campus. Um, for our dining options, our first year students will be enrolled in an unlimited meal plan. This is great because you'll take your Bearcat card, which is like your student ID, and you can swipe it into any of our dining halls on campus. We have four main ones, um, and they have salad bars, stir fry stations, um, special specialty days too, like Tender Tuesday, Sushi Friday. Um, I will say that the food is really good. You as a student wanna consider the food when you're thinking about places because that's what you're gonna be eating majority of the time. So throughout your college search process, ask about the food. How is it? What are the options? Um, I know I'm big on food and right off of campus, there are also many different worldly cuisines as well um, that our students love to dine at. And our dining are also great at um, meeting different dietary restrictions. So whether you are vegan, vegetarian, um, or have any allergies or whatnot, we are able to accommodate those as well. Um, so after you are on a full stomach, where are you gonna head? Right to our recreation center. So this is a huge rec center on campus. Uh, we have anything from an Olympic sized swimming pool, basketball courts, fitness classes. I really love to go to yoga after a long stressful day with my friends and it was great. Um, there's also a lazy river in our recreation center. My biggest regret as a student that I didn't go to the lazy river. You can literally just float around the pool um, but this is a free resource to all students getting into the rec. And so not only is UC a great place to call home, it's also a safe place to call home. So we have a fully certified police department at UC and our residence halls are locked 24 Again, you have to have that UC Bearcat card to get into your residence hall that you're assigned to. We have blue help phones all around campus um, with a direct line to campus safety. And then one of the last services that I definitely utilize as a student is Night Ride. So this is like a free Uber system. You can simply call them and they will come get you no matter where you are around campus. If you went to a restaurant with some friends or the library and you want to get back um, to your residence hall at night, they are right there for our students, which is great. All right. So this is my favorite. Um, slide here because it's talking all about um, finding your community at UC. So no matter where you go, I think it is very important to find your people um, at, the, at a university um, and who can really support you and just kind of match your passion. So no matter what you were involved in in high school, you are welcome to carry on the same thing um, here in college or you can find something different. So I'll talk about a few different communities that we have here. First is the learning community. So all first year students um, will be 
enrolled in a learning community. It's about um, 15 to 25 other students that share some common thread with you. Typically, it is your major. So for my major, communication, I went to the same classes with this group of like 15 students, and we became a little family. We studied together. We went to the dining halls together. Um, and then we hung out on the weekends together. And so um, going through all of your classes with this community um, and then meeting with a peer leader who is a upperclassman in your major um, was just a really great experience for me to get acclimated to college and um, to be really successful that first year. We have intramural sports. If you played any sports throughout high school, um, and you want to carry that on, but you're maybe not at the D1 level, we have so many of those. Anything from Bearcat bands, over 60 fraternities and sororities chapters. Um, a few things that I was involved as a student where I really found my voice and my community was a cultural organization called Panda Cats um, for Asian students and also student. I served on the equity inclusion community, which was so much fun. Um, just doing a lot of different diversity initiatives on campus um, to make it even much more inclusive. Um, and then I was also part of a women's leadership program, uh, which was also really great. So over 500 clubs and organizations, you are truly bound to find your fit at UC. Moving along, I mentioned we have D1 sports. So if you love football, basketball, anything, um, UC is a great school for you. Our sports are just getting better and better. Um, your card can get you into just about any game for free. Um, for our football, our men's football and basketball, tickets are first come first serve. But um, what's really great about our campus is that all of our sporting uh, facilities are located right on campus. So Nippert Stadium, for example, our football stadium is located in the heart of campus. As a student, I always passed it on my way to class and it's really cool. Sometimes you'll see students running up and down the stairs of Nippert. That wasn't really me as a student, or you'll see them taking pictures, hanging out in the field. That was more like me as a student. Um, but so any of the games are very accessible to get to. All right. And then the city of Cincinnati. So I will share that um, when I was in your shoes looking for schools as a student, I knew that I wanted to be in an urban location inside a city um, just because that was what I was kind of used to and I wanted different opportunities. So Cincinnati, right up my alley. Um, they have so many opportunities that help benefit you as a student off campus. There are 400, 500, 400 Fortune 500 companies. And so if you're looking for that wonderful co-op or internship um, at a very big brand corporation, they are literally right in your backyard. Um, Cincinnati is also named as a top 25 for young people. You will notice that a lot of students after they graduate, they choose to stay in Cincinnati, which is awesome. So young and thriving city with a lot to do. And then it is also named as one of the top five most affordable cities, um, which is great. And so as a student, if I wanted to get off campus on the weekends, I would go to somewhere like Finley Market, which is kind of similar to Columbus's North Market, has different worldly cuisines. I would go with some friends. Um, there's the Cincinnati Art Museum downtown Washington Park. So a lot of great things for students to do um, on the weekends, off campus, um, and opportunities to just thrive. All right, and so now that you've heard about all of that, I'm sure you're itching to just apply right now. And so um, I'm happy to share some details about that. Um, but first, this is kind of just a nice overview about a snapshot of what it looks like for students after graduation. So that is the average starting salary. Our students are hired by 160 Fortune 500 companies. And the number that I really want to point out is that 94% of employment is related to a student's major. And so I think that really ties back to the Bearcat promise um, that the University of Cincinnati promises students some type of experiential learning opportunities um, to go outside of the classroom, apply what they're learning inside the classroom to the outside world um, and have that on their resume. And so those experiences are really helpful, um, especially for the job hunt after graduation. So we can learn a little bit more about what it means to begin your Bearcat journey. So we are a common application school the Common App opens August 1st for this year's um, Uprising Seniors. And a few things that we will need um, is a student's official transcript. And then down here, it says ACT, SAT scores. Um, I will let you know for the fall 2022 um, year, we are still going to be test optional. 
this is wonderful because you do not have to worry about taking the ACT or SAT. This is uh, one of UC's strategies to becoming more equ equitable throughout the admissions process, um, as we understand that it may be difficult for folks to get out and take the test um, for a number of reasons right now. So you do not have to worry about it unless you are applying to the College of Nursing or Early Childhood Education. Those are two licensure programs that would still require you to submit your ACT or SAT scores. So again, that's the College of Nursing and Early Childhood Education. And then we also will require one letter of recommendation. This can come from any adult um, who can really speak to your strengths. So whether that is a coach, a teacher, um, or even a manager, supervisor, anyone who can speak to you um, and really give us a nice story about who you are as a student. And within the common application, you also have the opportunity um, to write an essay. Um, this personal essay, again, is a great option to talk about your story as us as admission counselors are reading these and would love to learn about who you are um, and what you can contribute to um, our campus. All right, so mark your calendar. December 1 is our early action deadline. This is the very important deadline um, for all scholarship considerations as well. There is not a separate scholarship application, just as long as you meet the December 1 um, deadline and have your application complete by then, you will be good. This is also the deadline for some of our competitive programs as well. Anything within our College of Design, Art, Architecture, and Planning, also known as DAP, um, College of Engineering Applied Sciences. These are very competitive majors that close quickly, so it's important to get your application in by then. And then next, we're gonna crunch a little bit of the numbers since we understand that it is really important for students to consider the cost when they're looking at different institutions. So we have our in-state tuition, out-of-state tuition, and then room and board is your meal plan and where you'll live. That ranges anywhere from 11,000 up to 14,000 based upon if you're living in the traditional hall, suite style apartment, or apartment style, which have different amenities. Um, at UC, we also have what's called tuition guarantee. That means whatever rate that you come in paying as a student, you are locked in. This really helps with financial planning um, as you are considering different scholarships, grants, loans, things like that, because you know exactly what rate you'll be paying up until graduation. And then this is a really great page um, to learn a little bit more about different financial aid opportunities. So anything from scholarships, which I'll be showing you our scholarship page next, to work study. We have so many different work study opportunities on campus, which I think are wonderful for students. They can work at the front desk of many of our different offices um, while earning that money. And it's very flexible around your schedule as a student as well. Financial aid opportunities, special rates for our folks who live in Indiana and Kentucky, grants and loans, and then of course, co-op. So I will mention that students who are in co-op, um, they put a lot of their earnings from their salary towards tuition. So while you are working, making anywhere from 14 upwards to $20 an hour throughout your co-op, um, students can do anything that they want with their money. They can buy a sports car if their heart so desires, um, or if they want to make a smart financial investment, you can put it towards your education, which is wonderful. Moving along, like I said, our scholarships are right here. So our most popular scholarship is the Cincinnati Century, which ranges from um, 1,500 upwards to 2,000. And then one more that I'll point out is the Darwin T. Turner Scholarship. So students have to be invited to apply for this scholarship. This is the only one with a separate application. Um, it um, emphasizes diversity and inclusion um, and leaders who can really um, hoeing in on their diversity inclusion um, are wonderful candidates for that scholarship as well. And then in terms of FAFSA, so in terms of financial aid, grants, loans, and work study, you want to ensure that you include, that you complete the FAFSA application at least by our December 1st deadline. We have our wonderful financial aid advisors in our one-stop office that can help, um, but also there's just a variety of outside organizations, nonprofits that are more than happy to help throughout the FAFSA application as well. And then this is our special rates for our um, students in Kentucky or Indiana. And then after you are admitted, these would be the next steps to confirm your admission, apply for housing, attend orientation, and check your UC email. 
Um, but in conclusion, that is what I have. And we are very excited to welcome students to the Bearcat family. I understand that the application process can sometimes be a little overwhelming as you're thinking about, you know, which college, what is the best fit? What is the best environment? And that's why I'm here um, because I went through the similar thing. Um, and I'm just excited to continue to share my experiences with students and help students become Bearcats. But thank you so much. And I'll open it up for some questions now. Thank you, Anna, very much. I think that was helpful. And um, Clark might have some questions too. Just one thing to ask, are you, if students do have questions during the application process, are, I know we obviously have your email address. Are you willing to be able to share that so that they can just reach out to you directly as opposed to sort of a generic admissions email? Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to copy and paste um, my email here into this chat, but feel welcome to share it um, with families as well. It's just anna.smith at uc.edu. It's nice to have an easy name for that. Um, not too hard to remember, but I also included a link there um, if they want to sign up for UC email so we can stay in contact with you, um, or there's an option to even visit campus this summer. If, um, like Clark said, our campus is really beautiful. Um, I absolutely love it. And so you can visit campus on a tour this summer if you'd like using that link as well. That's great. And good to know that summer, the tours will be open this summer. Mm -hmm. That's great. Clark, I don't know if you have any other questions. I know I had a, a couple. One of them, um, first of all, that was just really great, Anna. So it was helpful. It was so wonderful to hear so much about UC. And this is where I'm like, man, if I were looking at colleges, that would absolutely, because <laughs> I agreed with everything that had all the, I like being in an urban area and having the city, but then there's so many resources for students between all of the student organizations. Um, love the fact that you graduate with a degree in one hand and a plan for your future in another, because I think that's something that the students that are involved in and lead the way and lead the way really works on kind of career readiness and workplace readiness. And so to have college as a pathway to career is really, is really great. Could you talk a little bit more about, you mentioned how, um, I can't remember what it was, but you mentioned how they're kind of everybody starts, in, does everybody start in a learning community? Did I hear you say that right? And so yes. if you're an undecided student, how do you decide, how do you join a learning community or do they assign you with one? How does that process work? It's a great question. So like you said, all students are um, already kind of admitted into learning communities. Um, there are exploratory learning communities as well, because exploratory um, is still a major um, that is housed within the College of Arts and Sciences. And so um, there is a peer leader uh, for each of these learning communities, and they meet with their peer leader at least once a week. Uh, this is a great time for just bonding. They also talk about some college readiness skills, anything from a time management workshop um, to kind of how to find the best student organization for you. So those peer mentors are great. Um, and then again, students will be taking similar classes uh, in their learning communities, about three classes at least together. So those are great places to kind of immediately find friends, immediately find that support, no matter what major that you're in. Thank you. Of course. With the learning communities, are they able to move in early? I know at BG, they allowed us to do so. Is that the same for UC? For all learning communities, um, it kind of differs. We also have what's called living learning communities, which can get a little confusing, but those are specified halls uh, for some of our different academic colleges. So we have one for DAP students, a floor for engineering students, and they may have opportunities to move in um, early. And then also for our students in the transition program or Gen 1 theme house, I know for sure are able to um, move in at least a week early to get a little more acclimated to campus um, before the sea of people move in. So that's a good question. Speaking of the Gen 1 theme house, I'm assuming that's for first generation college students. Yes, it is. So could you, I'm, um, I'm a lot of students that are, that might watch this are likely to be first gen college students. Could you talk a little bit more about services for first gen students and that community, if you know more about it? 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, the Gen 1 theme house is located in Stratford Heights. It is a suite style um, living space where students would have at least uh, one other roommate and then a shared living space. And there are different um, resources and events that happen all the time that are just for those students. Um, anything from like college readiness uh, to, you know, how to kind of navigate campus, um, especially as a first generation student, things like that, especially our student affairs offices are always working with um, the Gen 1 theme house to ensure that students know where they can go for any type of help um, and things like that. So it really is great and students can live there all throughout their um, college time, which is awesome as well. Um, and they really find a special community there since it's all students who are going through a similar thing, navigating campus um, for the first time, things like that. And it's really empowering for students. That's great. I think those are services that didn't exist right when I was in college. And, and when you think about how overwhelming it can be just for the application process, yet alone then once you step foot on campus, not even necessarily knowing kind of what to do or where to go. And so to be able to live amongst others uh, that are not only experiencing that, but then have services directly um, to help students be successful is great. Great. And then I just went ahead and dropped um, the link to the Gen 1 house. Sorry, I didn't put the N on Gen. It's okay. <laughs> um, but that link is there. Definitely recommend to check it out to um, look into their services even more. And did you mention like one of your favorite organizations on campus? I don't know if you mentioned that throughout your presentation, but if so, I would like to hear it again just to, you know, First. my insight. <laughs> So I was involved in um, three different organizations throughout my time. Student government was one of them. And I love just getting to know different student leaders who were dedicated to making campus just better. Um, and so I served on the equity inclusion um, committee there um, and got to learn even more about the different services uh, and resources, events for students and help promote them as a student myself. Um, and then I was a part of Panda Cats, which is a cultural organization. They have so many of those, whether it is uh, Latinos in Action or the United Black Student Association. We have really, really just about everything to support students from different identities. And then the last one that I was in was called Women in Leadership and Learning. This was held through our Women's Center and I found um, my mentor there and I found just the greatest community. And we also worked on a lot of professional development in that club as well. So really great things all around, whether it is professional, social, or just something that's kind of fun. You know, we even, I think the last time I saw like a quirkyish one, it was like a hot chocolate appreciation club where students were literally just meeting online, talking about like their favorite hot chocolate, um, things like that. So many, many different organizations for students to just feel a part of something. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. Um, trying to encourage our participants as much as we can to kind of get involved um, in campus outside of um, like just doing the regular, going to class, just explore their campus, um, get to know it a little bit more and, you know, just meet a whole bunch of different people um, and, and create that community, which I love. Um, yeah, you you did so well. And like what, what I love most about um, UC is just the, the inclusion-based kind of values that you all have, um, kind of, recognizing and, and catering to so many different demographics of people um, and, and making them feel so welcome and, and, and so appreciated. I really, really, really love to see that. Um, and also just the small things like, um, like Dr. Kirsten Fox mentioned, uh, kind of preparing preparing um, preparing the students for the outside world, right? Like um, you mentioned that there's a, you know, a photo booth where you can get your, your headshots updated. Things yes. like that. I didn't even know about that. I didn't even right. care about my photos, my uh, headshots. <laughs> like I'll use old Facebook pictures, you know, forever. Right. But <laughs> things like that that are deemed as important and, and kind of spills over to the students kind of, um, I say, you know, builds their builds their confidence a little bit and and helps them become more well-rounded, more intelligent, and more prepared for the world outside of college. Um, 
So yeah, I love that. I love that so much. I wish I had that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I echo absolutely everything. And that at the UC, and I think there really is a small pocket um, around for everybody and that it does prepare students to be um, civically engaged and global scholars as well. Um, I think that students can have the opportunity to find themselves, which I think that the college experience, um, you know, is also about not only getting the degree, but also kind of having a sense of self um, and what you'd like to do in the world and give back. And so, yeah, I absolutely love all the opportunities. Yes. When I think about how you mentioned, right, like one, the fact that uh, even if it's first come first serve, that you can go to sporting events for free, Mm -hmm. Most division one and kind of big schools, that's not always the case. So that's pretty impressive. But then Cincinnati also has a thriving arts community. And so whether you're an athlete or an artist or both, there's so many different ways to kind of find, kind of find your way. Um, I'm just curious, where did you go when you went abroad with your, your study tour? Of course. So I did two different study abroad trips. The first one was to Guatemala and we learned about the coffee industry um, and how women play a big role in that. And then the other one I went to was um, a Vietnam program um, where we went to Ho Chi Minh City and then also a smaller rural area and did a service learning project there as well. So both were led by professors, both were classes um, that were you know through credit hours, students met a couple of times before to get to know each other and our smaller research projects. Um, and those were some of my favorite experiences at UC because I think that learning abroad, you know, and also learning about myself as a traveler, you know, as a person, um, it's just really, um, there isn't, you know, enough words to kind of put on that. So, yeah. That's, that's really cool. And do, because they're credit, you're, they're credit based, can students apply financial aid and scholarship dollars towards? Absolutely. Yeah. Which is an, you know, even better deal that yep. scholarships, financial aid um, can be applied to these study abroad courses as well. That's great. Thanks so much for the great questions. I don't have any more. Um, I don't know if you do, Dr. Kristen. No, I think this was great. And I think, um, you know, people should definitely look at UC as an, as an option. And I'm sure after hearing your presentation, they will. Um, I know I'm excited. My, my uh, oldest kid is only nine, but nine years from now, I'll be like, let's, let's drive down to UC and take a tour. Maybe future so. Bearcat. <laughs> That's great. Love it. Well, thank you both so much for this opportunity. I'm more than happy to connect with any students um, or do any other event like this and just, you know, share more about UC and my experiences. That's great. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. We can't say thank you enough. We love our presenters and, you know, you all do such a stellar job. Uh, we really appreciate you taking your time out to come speak with us. Um, don't forget, guys, um, her information is in the chat. So if you do want to utilize that, please do so. We highly recommend it just to, you know, get more exposure to UC because obviously it's a fantastic campus. And I already said that basically, but um, Yes, thank you so much. Thank you again uh, for coming. Thank you, Dr. Fox, for um, putting this together and, and making this happen once again. Um, and for everyone watching later, um, thank you for logging on. But this has been another College Readiness Wednesdays, and we will see you all next week. Thank you all. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Anna. Bye.